We're at Sage Industrial in Fresno, California. Eros makes a purifier, an advanced purifier system that uses reactive oxygen to purify the air and surfaces. Our XX series, YY series, ZZ is a little longer, then it goes to the 4120. And then we do even make 4240s, which are NEMA 4. This is behind the curtain. From right. beginning to end, to build one of the large units, takes us roughly 80 to 85 days. Now that was before supply chain went crazy oh, on right. us. So that's insane. Um, but in the process of it, now we have the ability to get ahead of the customer orders, right. have the ability to then configure to their needs quicker. So, so do these just can... stay in like a work in progress? They, they'll go from this, yeah, into a box that says it's a pre-build. Yeah. And then as soon as, and we know which models move a lot. So sure. if we're moving a lot of sevens, We'll you build have up those. 20, 30 sevens on the shelf, and yeah. then the pre builds are ready to, oh, we just got a big order for fives. Okay, now we shift all these to fives if we need to. You know, so we'll, mm -hmm. we'll do it according to the orders and to demand and history. I see. Yeah, I see. So we take it from parts to pre build, from pre build to a finished goods of sorts, yeah. and the finished goods to the actual configuration the customer wants. Because what we'll do is, hey, Mr. Customer, you want 20 feet of cable between here and your control? We actually will wire it with 20 feet of cable to the controller, put it all in one box. So all he has to do is hang it up on the wall and plug it in. Oh, how nice. So they're not having to do all the wiring. Wow. So if worst case, they'd have to disconnect four or five wires, run it through a conduit if they needed to, and then sure. reconnect them. But they're, they're not having to do that. That actually is a good question. That reminds me of, uh, like, is there any issues with like RF interference from a lot of grow lights in a given room? No, not for us. We've actually recently just passed all of the UL testing. CE testing, UKCA testing, because of the Brexit, you gotta love that. Yeah. RCM for Australia and New Zealand. So we have about 57 countries worth of testing that's been done so that we're not affected from outside sources of RF and we're not generating RF. So we do EMF testing, EMC testing, uh, FCC testing, all that. So these are all recently have passed all of that. Oh, wow. You manufacture things here. Yes. So that's awesome. Yeah, you all hold... USA made product, yes. 100%. United States. Yeah, we build you everything make it right here. here. So some of the parts, the USA made requires a certain percentage sure, sure. of the product to be that. So the challenges we have, capacitors, resistors, things like that that are not made in the US. Yeah. Fan motors are not. Um, but everything we have that is capable to be USA made. The powder coating is done locally. The metal bending is done locally. We source all the, an even anodizing, all that stuff's done locally. We have the harnesses are made right down the street. Right. Everything else that we build here is obviously USA made. And all your guys are right here, right, right yeah. now. We control the quality it. that way. So what are, the, what are these guys doing over here behind us? Okay, so it'll start, it starts in various points where they're actually pulling a back panel out, whereas he's taking a raw back panel over there, and we'll show you that. Once we get all the metal formed for the back panels, uh, for uh, he's doing ZZs right now. For those back panels, they get anodized, uh, local anodizer. When they come back, now we are etching onto it the, the, the labeling, basically, so the customer knows where the positive and negative goes. Okay. Then they'll take and start adding the harness and everything to the back panel. So they're gonna rivet that on. And then as it progresses down, now we're adding sides and fan assemblies. Yeah, okay. So now we're starting to get the enclosure into it, put all the lights into it, get a, this. This eventually ends up what we call a pre-build. They, uh, they'll take that and then they'll add in all the power supplies and turn it into a 4050, a 4028. So this model can go into one of about four different model styles, capacities. So the reason we have those is because we're doing like I told you, treating the surfaces, the volume of the air. So if I know the volume of the air, I know the temperature, what type of oxygen level, believe it or not, I do a lot of controlled atmosphere environments for apples, kiwis, hmm. uh, pomegranates, I could like see that. that. So I have low oxygen levels, so you have to know that. That's my fuel, ox reactive oxygen. And then from there, then it's the commodity. So if I'm pomegranate or am I cannabis? Am I a flower room or am I clone room? Yeah. The bio loads change. Based on that, we pr provide a unit that is designed to treat that bio load so that it's not running 1% of the time. It's like putting a 12 ton unit on a house that needs a two ton. Yeah, you don't want to have, have the wrong, you, yeah, it cools the house, but it's not efficient. Right. 
So we don't want to oversell somebody something, cost them way more that's never running, and we don't want to sell them something so small that's not working. Yeah. You want the results. So that's where all the different models come into, is sizing it to the room, and then it's just a matter of configuration. So what kind of controller do they want them? Where do they want it? Mm -hmm. Like these models are the, the 4120s I could talk about. They're uh, very, we'll call them potent. They're very strong, yeah, high yeah. capacity, low, low amperage, like I said, three amps, whereas this guy's drawn under two for sure. The small ones, uh, some of them only draw like a quarter of an amp. I mean, hmm. not very much power at all. So, um, so what's this gentleman doing here? What he's doing is he's calibrating. This particular unit has a brain in it called a watchdog. And the watchdog pays attention to all the reactions that are going on inside the chamber and can tune accordingly to make sure that it's effective. So what he's able to do is run it, test it, program it, make sure that all the, the, the brain basically that's in there is doing what it's supposed to do so he can quality control this and, and let it out the door. So before the customer gets it, he's touched it, made sure it's working. Currently. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah, so that's, the quality control requires two people at least here to go through a whole checklist of stuff. Customer support, yeah. very important to us. We have a whole portal that we let everybody, all the customers have access to, videos on how to, how to do this, spray regiments that have been recommended by other growers hmm. to work with our system. All of that we have on a portal and we keep adding to the portal a knowledge base basically for our customers oh, nice. to understand what's going on or call us. We will answer the phone. Yeah. We will walk you through it. So we'll you've spend been a lot great, of time. Really, the yeah. jobs that we've worked on yeah. have been great. Yeah, and that's, uh, we, we have to do that, we're partners. That's you awesome. can kind of see in this one, this one's kind of fun because you can kind of see in the end and you can see that there's a, an array yeah. inside and we'll go into the array room where they test those. So you can see in there. So we made everything accessible from the front for quick change. Even the, even the turbine chamber, all of that comes out with very minimal tools. This unit takes a screwdriver to open the lid and a 10 millimeter socket to loosen four bolts, loosen them, and the whole thing twists off. Quick connect plugs, change the chamber. In under 15 minutes, you can do service on this. Wow. It's real quick and easy to do service. All of them are very similar to that. Very thorough, well thought out design. Yeah, I started out in the field and the designs of, of old were painful. And so we have gone through when we redesigned from scratch, back in 13 about is where I started redesigning from scratch the 4000 series. It was all, it was thought to, I want as little tools as possible. Yeah, his little tool pouch right there is enough, really, to, to do any service on there. And even less than that's probably needed. Like you can see just this whole fan assembly is just two screws. Right. You know, so wow. two, two, and that's the M10 again. So it's the same bolt, uh, so even though I could probably use a smaller bolt to bolt that down, I use the same one. Standardized. To keep standard. Yeah. yeah. Keeps parts supply chain yep. a lot easier. Interconnectivity between parts. This same fan in a ZZ and a YY are exactly the same. And we do offer various varieties of that. Like we have a back pressure fan, we have a super quiet fan. So we have various fans depending on your application. Mm -hmm. Here, let me show you the warehouse. A little colder out here. We moved into this facility about a year ago, and this, year, uh, this facility is about 15,000 square feet, 5,000 of it in production, uh, balance in office and warehouse space. Um, and so we'll, we stage, I mean, we can, I can walk you this way, we stage finished products already in their uh, box. So we have custom boxes made with custom foam in right, order to right. ship it correctly. They're labeled with what they'll be long-term this, uh, this will turn from a 4050 into a 4050 with what kind of controller? I don't know, does it have a sensor, does it not? Does it have a switch, does it not? All of it will still end up in this box in the end. I see. So it goes from that pre-build to the model. So here's 4050s, here's uh, 37s, you know, so a variety of the items that are stocked. So these are able to be pulled off the shelf, wired up to a controller that's also on the shelf and get out the door in less than two weeks. That's the goal. Because otherwise, it takes way longer to get the metal formed, right, uh, right. get the powder coat done, get, you know, get it assembled. There's, there is a longer process to it, but like anything, you start now, yeah. get it to a certain point, and now we can get it out the door. Really well organized. Yeah, thank you. That I, can, I can't take all the credit for. <laughs> uh, my inventory manager, David, does all that. <laughs> but uh, all the boxes, so we have custom boxes made so that, um, that they, shipping was an original issue we had. And we wanted to solve that so that it's not bubble wrapped. So we have custom package that was designed to be able to manage through the standard shipping methods. We do all our testing in here. I, I don't know if you want to look at that real yeah, quick right well, now. Yeah, definitely. The, the core engine, as we uh, discussed earlier, was is the reactive reaction chamber. The array itself, I know it's kind of a, um, 
tight little space in here. But the reaction chamber itself has to undergo testing through my brain and through a custom system that measures it. And I create very tight tolerance because it needs to meet a, a, a manufacturing tolerance that's really tight that will last in the field for a certain amount of time before it fails. I'm gonna turn this on. And what happens is in this room, normally the door's closed, so it's pitch dark. And the, uh, the quality control person can look and visually inspect what's happening on the array. So you can see the plasma being formed here in purple, as well as you can see that the testing set point is 240 and we're hitting 230. So we're 10 low on this particular one. Now, I just turned it on, the test room's not up to speed. They have to run through a bunch of calibration first before they start putting it under test. Right. So it's just an example, but that's what they do. Because we started out as a contractor and do still service in the field, like there are customers down, you know, right down the street, that large pomegranate grower that we go and do service, they got 57 units, and we spend a week or two out there doing their service for them. A lot of customers still, and dealers, will send back any of the parts that they service. So we'll get back all the chambers. We'll do our best to recycle. So if we can get the tube, out and clean again we can use it can be used again so we'll do what we can to keep it as green as possible mm -hmm. even our grease uh, eater is a smart washer so it's a uh, like an antimicrobial hmm. uh, grease eater it's really cool so it's very uh, very green um, and you know safe obviously for the environment uh, that's how we it. have organic certifications and we can work with organic farmers is because we're not adding chemicals into the environment. We're also, even in our practices of manufacturing, not doing that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, this little room here, it's kind of fun because it's its own little environment and uh, they can run little tests in here, but most of the time this is just uh, for testing sensors. And it's its own autonomous HVAC system and we can test sensor heads that come in to make sure of failures. Are they within our calibration spec? They come in calibrated, they come in with certificates. We want to verify that. Yeah, that's great. And so should things happen in shipping you know, et cetera. So we test them here before they even go on the shelf. Once they're on the shelf, then they'll put them in a the unit and retest with a full system before it goes to the customer. And because we're, we're measuring parts per billion. So you're talking very small amount of ozone yeah. that we're measuring in with these sensors. And that parts per billion, if it drifts one or two, not a big deal, but if you're drifting five and I'm trying to keep a 30, that's out of calibration for us. I see. Um, it tends to be one year really suggested, hey, I just, even if it's reading right, I would still replace it once a year because it's a it's a, com a critical it's component. Critical. It really is a critical component. In reality, we suggest every six months, and we have customers that religiously have us go every six months and just do service every six months. That's what we call preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing my oil changes whether I need it or not, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Versus I'm waiting till there's a problem and then I do it. Well, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate this no, tour. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate very, you coming by. Yeah. Very informative. Yeah. I love what you guys are doing. Cool. Really, it's a good product. Nice. Yeah. Good business. Yeah, I love it. Good people. Your people seem very happy. Oh my gosh, yeah. They're, it's a great team. Well, I look forward to more feedback yeah. and doing more projects together. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks again, Steve. Brian. Yeah, as always. All right. Well, I'm yep. Steven from Monster Gardens. Till next time. It's almost 16 months, uh, but we now have it. So yeah. that's super awesome. Don't do that. I am very sorry about that. <laughs> um, that panel. Right. In order so to this, like that. right behind you yeah. here. Yeah, there you go. Made so in all USA. this. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to touch it like no, that. That was it, yeah. not appropriate. Oh, that's right. We have cleaners come up right behind you. <laughs>